Hello YouTubers, this is Captain Howe, 1947, back with a project gun that I took on about six, seven months ago. I went to a, um, an auction, a gun auction, and um, towards the end of the auction, this weapon came up for sale. Uh, I had looked at it previous uh, when you had a time, when we had time to uh, inspect the weapons. And didn't show any interest in it at the time uh, that it came up. Of course, they start out at some ridiculous price, four or five hundred dollars. It got down to twenty-five dollars. I said, "Well, what the heck?" So I offered twenty-five dollars, and uh, went to another fella. Came back to me and at forty, and I said yes, and um, ended up. Nobody else wanted it, so I got it for forty dollars. Now, it doesn't look like anything like what we have here. The uh, this here is a picture of what it looked like the day that I bought it. Uh, you'll notice there's no magazine, there's no trigger guard, and you'll notice up here that there seems this 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 gun must have been in or near a fire and it had um, didn't actually have any burns in this into the stock but I think it had it had um, put the finish had driven it into the wood itself well anyway I said well, what the heck for forty dollars it would be a lot of fun to see if I can do anything with it and I got home that night I didn't have any any, any clue of of, of what a mouser was all about and um, so I uh, started looking on the internet and uh, it was so dirty and gummy and everything that um, after finding a little bit of information that it was an 1891 Argentine mauser and it was on this stock as you see right now now this stock Somebody had taken it on, carving it. They had done a very nice job. Down here you've got a, a scene, you can see, of a, um, a deer. And then there's all these oak leaves and things like this. On the other side, I'll turn it upside down, there's a cheek rest and additional carvings of uh, oak leaves. But they didn't know what they were doing and they had a huge opening down here which you see right now and nothing fit it was missing some of the parts the trigger guard and the magazine so the first thing I did was clean it up and check the bore and the bore looked pretty good so then I took on stripping it and I ended up stripping down the, uh, the gun, taking all the finish off, cleaning it all up. And it came out fairly good, except you can notice there's some darkness up here. And this was due to this fire damage that this, this gun had been near or in. I uh, was able to find the trigger guard and a magazine uh, and got those two parts I then uh, um, set on getting it all put back together the first thing I had to do was close in this area down here and I couldn't tell what kind of wood I had at the time after cleaning it but I had some I got some oak and I figured well what the heck it, it needed to strengthen it anyway so I took some quarter inch thick oak and I cut this and filled this whole area in. Then I turned around and then cut out for the trim, for the trick guard and for the magazine. And um, but when I got it all together, got ready to stain it, looked fairly close, but once I stained it, obviously you can see a difference in the, uh, in the two woods. But I don't think it looks all that bad. Remember, it's a project gun. And you're dealing with what, whatever you have. Uh, 
sometimes it's not the best. Well, I put on a finish. I uh, got about four or five coats of tongue oil onto it. Uh, and so then I decided, well, I'll go down and see if it, uh, if it shoots. So we took it to the range and it shot fine. It um, probably put a box, box and a half of shells through it. Got home after shooting it and found that there was a crack back here. I was kind of disappointed to put all this work into it and stock's got a crack in it. Now the, the, uh, the barrel, the receiver, and the bolt are all matching. And the gun was, from the, from the serial numbers, was uh, made in 1894. And uh, so it's a 127-year-old gun. So I figured, what, uh, what the heck? So I started looking around on the internet again and found Boyd's gun stocks out in South Dakota. And I ordered a gun stock for the Mauser. And this is what I bought. And it fit perfectly. Anybody who... Uh, uh, was to get a, a gun stock from my finger would be very happy. I was very happy. I I was amazed that just there was. They said you may have to do a little bit of modification. It's 95% done. I didn't have to do anything but just putting two screws into it, putting it together. So then I uh, we went back and shot, and um, it had the Mauser sights on it. The Mauser sights. I don't think the gun is great, but the sights, at least for an old guy like me, they're tough to use. Um, I mean, we got it to where it was fairly, fairly close, but it wasn't anything great about it. So I started looking around again and uh, found a company up in Pennsylvania, s &K, I believe it is, and I was able to buy this rail, which would fit where the original sights were. There was no drilling. All you had to do is take the original sights off and then bolt this rail on and everything. So I said, well, that's worth a, worth a shot. I had a, a scope, a two-power scope, which was off of my 44 Magnum Ruger. So I, uh, I said, well, I got a scope. And I said I would make this into a sporting configuration. The scope has an eye relief of 10 and a half to 22 inches because it is actually a, um, a, a, uh, a pistol scope. It's a Nikon, two power. So I went ahead and got some rings, mounted that onto it, went back down the range and uh, sighted it in after, after a little bit and it shot perfectly. I says, wow, this is really, really, really great. Um, I had uh, kind of was really happy with the gun except the cosmetics was not that that great. Now I have tried bluing and I have to say I have not had that much success with it. I know there's guys out there that probably are very good and but I got a real long barrel here and you know it's kind of hard to do the ones where you can set it in, the solution and everything seems to get more uniform than kind of smearing it on. So looked around and found out that there's some uh, uh, spray on coating from Dura Coat. Uh, it's uh, kind of pricey, it's $35 to $50 depending. But it came in an aerosol can and I was able to, uh, I'm able to spray paint fairly evenly. So uh, I got a can of it in the matte black and I took the gun apart, hung it up. They tell you to put on three to four coats, uh, light coats each time. Let it dry for 10 or 15 minutes. Use an air, a, a, uh, uh, air blower on it to heat it up to kind of make it dry so you can move along. I uh, sprayed the whole thing let it sit for 24 hours, reassembled the gun. Then um, 
They say do not use it for another three, two to three weeks while the while the finish finishes curing, which I've done, and it's turned out really really nice. I mean I really am happy with the the whole um, finish and um, of the gun how it turned out. I use this mostly as a show stock now, although I have gone back in and have put a bolt through here and here, reconfigured some of the insides so that it, um, I believe now will hold up to the stresses of shooting this, this gun. Um, whoever started doing it, they did a nice job back here carving all this and doing all this work, but they really um, didn't know what they were doing when they got up to setting the, um, the, the barrel. I had, actually, when I first got it, the whole barrel was sitting up about a quarter or more inch. I had to bed, they didn't have to bed it right. They put on, they put on a, a J.C. Higgins um, butt pad, which is actually old, the old uh, Sears and Roebuck gun. I've not taken it off, I've left it on there after I refinished everything. So I've been real happy with it. It was kind of a, a new deal for me. I had never done anything like this before. And um, I think it turned out fairly well for somebody that really had no knowledge of, um, of all this. And um, we will um, see how the finish holds up, how the gun is. But it's kind of cool. Uh, and it shows you some of the things that you can do if you're willing to take the time. And you get a good deal. I've obviously got more tied up in this gun than $40 originally, but it originally started out at $40 and between some of the additional parts that I've had to buy and some of the other stuff that I've done um, in my time. You know, I've got a lot more than that. But it's kind of a cool weapon. And uh, I kind of enjoyed it. So um, if you'd like to comment, I would appreciate hearing from you. And uh, you'll notice that this is really a distinct weapon in as much as the hand grip has got this huge uh, grip, pist pistol grip down here. So when you take it to the range, it actually kind of stands out. Unlike when you use this one, uh, this actually is a very, very nice stock. Boyd's um, did a nice job, and I really, I really do like the the uh, stock that I got from them. So, anyway, that's all I have to say. I'll talk to you later. Bye.